could probably be way more successful. I had this shower. It was one of those Reddit shower thoughts. Uh, I really curate, by the way, side note, do you curate Reddit? Do you go to Reddit? Are you a Redditor in general? Like at all? Are you a Redditor? Uh, I, uh, not really. Maybe I, four times a month. I don't want to be a Redditor. I hate the the baggage that it brings to me as a human being, but I find it an interesting place until every once in a while I check myself before I wreck myself because I realize that most of the people on there uh, are 17 years old. And I'm a grown-ass man at 50 years old. though i am a grown man i am a grown man i am 50 years old i'm almost 50 uh it's coming up on my birthday uh, dustin kava uh, welcome everybody to because cannabis presented by wayward media uh got some exciting things to talk about just dustin and i on today's show we got some great interviews that we've had recently so we're excited to get some of those we've had just a couple of dustin and i shows but it's been nice Dustin, to chat with you again bc wayman dustin kava every single wednesday 4 20 p.m on youtube every thursday spotify video podcast there's 100,000 video podcasts on Spotify. My email told me, Dustin, and we are like 77 of those. <laughs> That's a, it's a minuscule number, but it makes me feel like I'm part of a team. I'm part of the Spotify podcasting team. Me and you, Dustin, bam, we should be making more bank than we do. Welcome, everyone. <laughs> How are you feeling today, sir? I'm awesome. Uh, great morning, night, evening. I don't even know what this Whatever is. Whatever time anymore, it is. I'm great. Yeah, the show's not recorded live. You probably, we do live shows. 420, we did a great four-hour and 20-minute show. Go check that out back in the old playlist uh, archives there. Four hours and 20 minutes of me and you yapping away, talking about stuff. Uh, I'm looking forward to the show today. We got some things to talk about, uh, some things on our brain for Dustin and I to talk about in the world of cannabis, right? That's what we're trying to do here every week when we join us on YouTube, 420 p.m. or on Spotify or anywhere that you listen to audio podcasts or follow us socially at meet WM at meet wayward on Facebook, uh, trying to talk about the world of cannabis and kind of the regular world, right. And somehow how they merge together. Do you ever Dustin and maybe, I don't know, do you hang with enough normies to be outside of the cannabis world sometimes? And maybe it's around kids uh, or our parents, but I find myself now, especially more of my life is non cannabis working folks at just this very moment and it rises it's back and forth it's two very <laughs> distinct crowds and you have to know when to hold them know when to fold them so to speak like you can't always go in all your you know all the time out of the cannabis closet like here i am weed smoker puff it, puff it, pass it, bitch, puff it, puff it. like you can't <laughs> you're welcome to sing it's a bonus uh should save that for the patreon Right. I, do you find I know we've talked a lot about being in that comfort, uh, but do you find yourself if you end up in a world so long of non cannabis, like you slip or you just become normal? <laughs> I I don't think most people if they fuck, how to say this, uh, I don't have any normies around me. Fair. And then I am the most paranoid out of all of them. And so I'm the one who's like, let's go behind the shed. The kids are a fucking half a mile away from here. And, you know, I just don't want them to see anything right now. And they're like, fuck it. It's my back porch. I'm blazed. I pay for the back porch. I'm smoking here. You know, so I don't know. I, I, I'm the, I am the opposite. So if they're, yeah, I don't know. I'm very paranoid as well. What are you? I'm curious what people are. Leave it in the comments below or follow us on social media. Let us know uh, when you got to smoke, whether you're medicating or just using adult use, whatever, recreating, uh, do you just blaze it like you got it? Do you wear your <laughs> weed flag proud and high? Or are you probably more maybe similar to Dustin and I? I just went through this, Dustin. I spent a week uh, in Hocking Hills. I was with my family. 
Right? My family knows I consume. I'm here publicly talking on the airways with my parents. They know it, but I'm also a polite person, right? I don't just like rip out the fatty and the joint in front of them at the table. I'm just not who they are. They don't consume. I try to be discreet and I have my other devices and such, but sometimes you just want to feel the smoke in the lungs, right? But even at Hocking Hills, like in the giant wilderness and cavernous literally area, and because we're in this giant state lodge and there's all, I felt myself always trying to like hide it. And I'd be on my balcony and I'm like, like doing this because there's everyone else out on their balconies and such. And I felt, I felt nervous. However, you know, like not everyone is that way, but I get that way at those places. I get very like not secretive, but then sometimes, sometimes I don't give a shit and I just roll out and I have it hanging out of my mouth and I'm like, what's up? So maybe it's just the place you're in, right? Obviously it's the place you're in. Uh, but it is interesting. I'm curious. Do you, uh, you, the listener there, how do you roll or how do you not roll? Do you hide it? What do you think? If you had to guess most people, and I think this is a conversation that probably, and I don't know why we're using the term normies, but we'll stick with the vernacular for right now. Uh, the normies, the non-smokers, the people who might roll their eyes at you getting a little high. How do you think the consumers, like we'll just go with the, with the non-normies, the people who smoke them. Do you think most medicate or smoke openly or do you think most are discreet if you had to guess you've ran a smoke shop for a long time you sold a lot of different devices to a lot of different people so you have an interaction of over a decade plus not just working in the world but a decade plus of people buying devices to then consume the plant from so you probably should have a strong idea you know there's only so many that can buy your five thousand dollar glass dragon billy bonk thor and hookah share it with seven people so i gotta imagine most are oneies and discreets and small things that are probably there or maybe they converse with you about this in your experience how have you found them to be like are people on the dl or are people open you think uh of the consumer and, and base like heavy the, consumers the discreet line is drawn at having children mm, 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 so mm. but you know snap I, yep it's just i don't know yeah that's just the way it is i think and i think that that's the I think that's what every human has to go to. You need a time in your life where the bong can sit on the coffee table and ain't no one saying shit. It's actually like, a, 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 I don't know, a, a rite of passage in some way. It's and then normal, right? And I think that's what's different. For example, I think of the backyard barbecue that people have. We just had July 4th not too long ago. Cracking a few beers is acceptable and normal and drinking them and happens all the time. We had a, I don't want to go there. People down the street probably drinking too much, getting a little rowdy. Like it happened. Like that is a normal, acceptable thing to do with children around. Do you want to get drunk in front of your kids? No, but having a brewski, having a cocktail, uh, doing that in front of your kids is completely acceptable societal-wise, right? Let's Even just put it that at way. at my kids' baseball game, I heard the moms being like, oh, I should have brought the White Claws today. And I was like, what? Like, what? I almost leaned over. I was like, oh, well, I should have brought the fatty, you know? And yeah, if you would have right said, man, I could like, really use on. some super lemon haze to help me get through this moment. <laughs> He'd be like, oh. So like, that's what's exactly. so funny. You are correct. You could easily say, Oh, well, you know, man, this, you know, would make this ball game a little better. A couple of beers and the dads would be like, yeah, you know, it could be eight in the morning on a Saturday at the soccer game, the field covered in dew, the little munchkins and their bright yellow and green uniforms running <laughs> like a beehive, not really near the ball, but just sticking to each other. And the dads are all sitting in their sport chairs and they could say, man, you go for a beer right now. You could crack <laughs> a beer at eight in the morning on the golf course, seven in the morning, perfectly normal, perfectly acceptable. There are people. Women, typically scantily clad, maybe not scantily clad, provocatively <laughs> clad, driving around golf carts selling you overpriced beers, perfectly normal. But if you would have leaned over and back, yeah, you know, it would go great with this game, you know, some banana sherbet, some green crack, you know, combo. Ah, it would just really mean a great place to watch my kids play soccer. They would kick your ass out of the league. <laughs> yep, yep. And I, yeah, that, that's exactly it. I, I don't know. But even then I was like, Fuck, I, I don't know. I don't know if I was like half offended or half like, you're pretty cool. I could get to know you. You know, like you're someone that I think like the, we should be friends with type of thing. But I don't know. And then there was that thing of like, please, it's fucking five o'clock on a 
and a school. You know, I don't know. I don't know. I know. Yes, Do you think it would be worse or better if we introduced them to uh, one of the newest members joining Wayward Media coming up here soon, Raven Ariola with the Plant Save My Life podcast? Now, Raven, right? If you haven't listened to the Plant Save My Life podcast, it's available right now. Season one is available right now, anywhere that you listen to audio podcasts. And season two, launching here in just a few weeks. On Wayward Media, wayward.media, a lot of great guests. Raven, uh, we have fun. We have a lot of fun time with our guests. We have a lot of silly conversations, marketing conversations, you know, business conversations. Uh, Raven is an educated man. He is a smart a man, a scientific advisor, a consultant, an educator in the medical cannabis space. He's um, doing his thing out there, and his conversations are very deep uh, with people, you know, patients, doctors, users, shamans, uh, not only cannabis. If it grows from the ground. And it's had a uh, instrumental effect. And a lot of the times he dips his toe into the psychedelic world, whether it's mushrooms and ayahuasca and all these other things that people are using these days. And we're hearing wonderful feedback, right? Anyone that has had these guided psychedelic trips with high end psychedelics, even MDMA and PTSD going together, we've seen wonderful or heard and wonderful results of people literally Thanos like snapping, having an entirely different outcome afterwards. And if you introduce them, like, here's my whole point after that long winded rant, I break out at the soccer game, not just me and you, right? Not just us two being silly and goofy, but you break out Raven. He does have the ponytail though. He's not, but he looks like a smart dude with a, give him a jacket with some patches. That dude yes. with his ponytail. All right, Raven, that's our code for you. Uh, when you join the plant, Samuel, um, <laughs> podcast when you join wayward media jacket with patches i bet you raven areola already has a jacket with patches on the sleeve Gosh. i'm gonna put it out there look at he you would, badass he, he would he he would fucking pull it off and, and have you ever actually like when was the last time you went through his podcast and and read his show titles the man is a heady man the it is it like if you want if you want your mind opened up and you want to actually learn about something more than, I don't know, the surface, he is the place to go. It's crazy. In fact, I want you, can you go to plantsavemylife.com? Yeah, right I just now? pulled it up on screen here okay, right I now. Want, say, I want you to read me episode number 17. <laughs> so, 17, so let's find so we're on plantsavemylife.com once again raven Ariola uh, is going to be joining the wayward media a uh, family putting out his season two podcast uh 21 episodes in the first season we're on the show right now if you're watching on video on youtube or on spotify uh we're on that site it's a wonderful podcast please follow and subscribe and support uh him as he joins our channel we got you know psychedelics uh looking at cancer we're getting the show 17 ayahuasca and psychedelic therapy uh with alex therberge Brian Adams, friend of the family, uh, so to speak. Love. Here we go. Episode 17. Oh, you got to say it quick. Three times fast. <laughs> Hold on a you're looking on video. If you're watching on YouTube right now, if you followed us, if you subscribed on Spotify, if you liked us and you're watching video, you can see on screen right now. And if you're listening to the audio, you're going to hear me pronounce these words in a second. But damn you, Dustin. Uh, primary, I got that. Primarily sclerosing shallow. <laughs> Primary sclerosing shalantagit. No, it can't be shalantagit. It sounds silly. No one would say a doctor. Primary sclerosing shalantagus and cannabis suppositories with McKenna Campbell. I got McKenna Campbell uh, for this. Colantagus? Colagonus? It's got to be colon. It's got to be like colonigus. Col colagon colonigus? Colonitis. Colonitis. Sclerosing colonitis and cannabis suppositories, man. Uh, that's why we have silly shows that have two words together that rhyme or start with the same letter. Uh, Plant Save My Life podcast. Here's my point with that. My point with that is we have so many guests on here where we are just completely out of our fucking league. Yeah, and we are awesome. And, and, and there are some, we have so many doctors and, you know, like DNA and genetics guys that just have this massive brain and i don't know yeah, but who I, I else just... is gonna ask them about their recipes and how they wear their polo shirts whether they tuck them in like who else is gonna talk like other one else is gonna ask him super heady docty nerd or shit like a bunch of made-up words like they do on plant Samuel life podcast uh we we get to have fun with them dustin 
I, that is true, but I feel like Raven gets to hold his own in the whole spectrum, you know, and in in certain regards, I don't know, like, I think he's just that that amazing addition that I can't wait to see, you know, what happens with. Um, he said, it's going to be a fun one. Uh, me as well. I'm going to use the show. We're going to use the show today to uh, talk about some of the things we have going on. That's kind of what this show is for. We got a ton of great interviews we've recorded and got some booked already. So we're really excited what the next August and September is going to bring you with our guest lineup. So please follow us, uh, subscribe so you make sure you get the latest notifications at Meet WM socially. Uh, but I've come to a realization, Dustin. We are cruising we're on the precipice i love using that word i try to use it three times a day sometimes out of context we are on the precipice of episode 100 we are coming up on a monumental i think this is like 78 9 i don't know where this will fall it's going to be almost 80 it's going to be in that area right we're late 70s high 80s right now with this episode uh by that's 12 weeks no i don't do math math is hard four months five months from now by the end of the year we're going to be pushing episode at 100 you know, we're trying to get some big name. If you know a big famous guest who'd like to be on for episode 100, ring my bell, call me, maybe. Uh, so we have been putting out episodes weekly um, because Cannabis, you've created an amazing website at Wayward Media. We have a lot of great avenues. We have, and if I'm being a bit of humble pie, but we are pretty smart people, Dustin, but we are terrible, terrible at marketing. As much as we know about it and talk about it, we have not been the best at spreading the word of Wayward. We really haven't. We do this here. We meet every week. We're really good with it, but getting out there, and part of it's the social media game and the habits, the good habits that you have to build. It's so like we're gonna... a, a mechanic. It's like a mechanic going home to fix his own car. You know, so it's it's like a, a, a I don't know, a massage person going home and their husband I'm like, honey, can you get my back a little bit? And they're like, fuck you. No, <laughs> no, absolutely not. Like, maybe I'll get around to it next month or something, you know? So it's it's not that we're bad at it. It's we're great at it for other people. <sighs> but for ourselves, we're like, this is, it. it yeah. We're, we're no, I get your side note. Car. Do you think the cannabis grower all day at the big MSO who comes home and grows a little on the side for his family, do you think he gets annoyed at having to do both? Same concept. I do. I think, I that think you would. I think 100%. You'd be, you go from having 25 plants to having five when you get home, just so it's like that 20 minute a day, half an hour a day shtick instead of the two hours, you know? Like, yes, I really do believe that. And so I don't know. I don't know. There's something to it, but that's what I think the main issue is. It's not. Yeah, no, it's well, true, though. Era. It's an interesting conversation to be had. You know, like I love disc golf, but I don't think I'd ever want to work in disc golf. I like it's my escape from all the other shit in life to get out into the woods and throw these frisbees and chase them around. Right. So when you start to combine it and that's a really long winded conversation, we'll have with someone smarter than I is most people on here are smarter than us, as Dustin said <laughs> about working in this industry uh maybe here's a big plug we got coming up maybe uh we'll learn a little bit of that from andrew d'angelo so we had andrew d'angelo is a past guest on our show i don't know what number you can check back uh somewhere in the past uh live streams archive uh maybe we'll put the link down below there um don't make a note of that Dustin. put the link down below to put the andrew d'angelo episode in there so we are getting ready to record a new series with Andrew Giangelo. We'll be introducing it soon. Uh, we're going to do a special three-part series focusing on entrepreneurship, easy for me to say, in the cannabis industry, uh, learning from someone who was a cannabis consultant before the term cannabis consultant existed, right? And so there's something we're really excited about. Hopefully, Dustin will get off our asses and get home at night and market the shit out of that because that's some ex something exciting uh, we have going on. How are you looking forward to speaking with Andrew D'Angelo? Uh, the ability him and his team have got together with Wayward Media. We're going to be producing a three-part series uh, over this fall. So be looking for it, and we'll have some more concrete dates soon. We're doing the process right now. Uh, so this fall, early fall, looking to release this. I'm excited to uh, – this has been a fun process so far with his team and with Andrew – and I'm excited to put it together. But these are the type of things we're talking about, Dustin. People are reaching out. They're like, hey, put this together. And we're like, yeah. But gosh darn it, we got to let people know about it. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes, we do. And you know what? For anybody who's, who continues watching us on all the networks, we really do appreciate it. We, we see your numbers, and it means a lot to us. Uh, there's something else. So we got the Andrew D'Angelo thing. I want you guys to make sure you check out that. Uh, let's pull up a bunch of web pages of our friends today. Here's something you've been working on a lot, Dustin, and we've had some 
uh, guest on before, our big uh, fan of the show, friend of the show, uh, easy for me to say, uh, Dr. Bridget Williams. Um, Courage and Cannabis is about to launch volume number two. Volume number two is coming out. This website, I got to tell you, Dustin, it's gorgeous looking. It's gorgeous looking. Ah, thanks, man. Um, yeah, dude, you know what? I am. It's pretty crazy to see all that goes into something like this. Uh, I think they're up to over 50 or something like that contributors between people who sent in quotes to help inspire or speaking of quotes that were in the book, uh, Danielle Simone brand from weed mom is in here. Uh, and they just, they, there was so much talent going into this and a lot of, uh, I don't know. It's just, it's really great to hear essentially the stories of people within the industry or who have used cannabis or used cannabis for their family members to have a better life. And it's just, it's really powerful. So yeah, I don't know. This book I believe is coming out in the next three or four days. So definitely watch it at courageandcannabis.com. Yeah. Courageandcannabis.com. We'll definitely put that link in the description below in the comments, both in the Spotify and the YouTube and every other podcast you listen to. So check that out. But that new book is coming out soon. Probably be out by the time you hear this. So couragingcannabis.com. Uh, check it out. You can buy it uh, anywhere. Pretty much that you listen to books. You can buy it on Amazon. Uh, shit. You know what I've been thinking about, Dustin? I've been thinking about this for a while. We have all these. I'm sorry. I don't mean. Let me finish my promotion. And I'll go to my site. I'm making note. Amazon. All right. So visit <laughs> couragingcannabis.com. Check out the book. Uh, we have a lot of friends of the show who have written books and things that you can find on Amazon, which is where I was trying to get to. Uh, but that's a great thing that's coming out. I believe we're going to line up some interviews with some of the authors that are going to be in there. Uh, Dustin has had a big part in this book. So if you want to help support uh, the show, help support Dustin, designing the website, taking a look at a lot of the graphical pictures and such into the book. I think you did some work in that. Uh, oh, I got I to know. design the cover too for them. Oh, Forget you got to, that. this is your work right here. We're looking at, I almost feel like I'm interviewing one of my, one of the artists we've had the triumphant stories, uh, courage and cannabis forward by Adam Wilkes, uh, the CEO of Tyson 2.0, uh, 40 to 50 authors are in uh, authors and contributors. Uh, yes. is part of it. Lots of different wonderful people in their stories in there. We've been scrolling through a bunch that are on the screen. Uh, Dustin did the website. Dustin did the cover right here that you see. Uh, Dr. Bridget Williams is the mind and the brain behind this. Shout out to her and DK. Um, you guys have been awesome. So check that out, couragingcannabis.com. Uh, I think that is something that we really would appreciate your support on. Um, all right. What I was trying to get to, Dustin, is so we have a lot of things that we do through Amazon. We have a lot of people that we promote. And I was talking to, um, I don't know, an acquaintance, a business acquaintance, a guy who I was, did a podcast with before who I'm trying to get us to be as a guest on. And so I don't know how it came up mid like email conversation. Uh, we're talking um, about promoting, finding sponsors, finding a way to make a little profit off putting this show out there, off creating content. And he mentioned, if you got people that sell stuff on Amazon, you should sign up for their affiliate links. And this is something we're toying with. Uh, we do have one affiliate going right now. We'll give them a shout out, Bud Love, budlove.com. If you go to budlove.com, right? You know, what if I told you right now, Bud gets better? Uh, Bud Love is an herbal mixer. Just like those drinks we talked about earlier, uh, spice up your cannabis life. I'm going to give that to Roy. You should charge him. Spice up your cannabis life, <laughs> budlove.com. Uh, lots of great herbal mixers. Dustin's a big fan of it as well. Check them out. And if you go to at the checkout, enter the code wayward15, you'll save 15% on your order. Uh, we've had CEO Roy Lipsky on the show before. He makes a mean hummus. See who else asked him about his hummus? That was us. Uh, Roy <laughs> Lipsky, CEO, um, is on to there. So check out his interview in the comments below, but visit budlove.com, wayward15 for 15% off. So apparently, Dustin, you can go to Amazon and you know make an account, which I'm going to do right now. Should we do this live, like on the air? I think we should do this live right now on air. Okay, okay. First, two things. Okay, go. I want you to insert the password first before we go live. 
All right, let me create the account. So you've got to talk for a second. I'm going to make this account. I'm going to make it a shared account. We're making this is titillating uh, radio here, people. Titillating conversation. I don't even know what you're doing, right but I'm making I'm an account. Make an Amazon account, and then we're going to sign up for an affiliate program because I've heard, and this is where I was trying to get to. I've heard it's not as easy as it seems, and I want to know what that means. That's all he said. He goes, "If you ever created an affiliate account," I was like, "No, <laughs> not really." He goes, "Do it, do it," and he just this weird little like ha ha like wink emoji. <laughs> not as easy as it seems. Like how hard can I have an Amazon? account? account like a personal one you are right i'm not going to pull this up uh, until i'm done with this part so let's go we're going to make our account uh where I, go? man i I'm can't gonna... even begin to imagine what could be the problem with creating an affiliate link i do I, i'm trying to think of some of the processes tech wise that i've always absolutely hated uh side or... note uh, this is for dustin i know once again uh tantalizing uh conversations listening here but this is real life this is what <laughs> people do what you want to and part of this is the whole idea behind the show and we're going to continue this thread as we keep talking um we're we've got to get better at marketing and promoting and so we thought if we're going to do this Let's help share with other people like yourselves <laughs> who are trying to market and promote and get it out there. What are some things we can do? So first up, we're going to create an Amazon affiliate account, but for some reason it's not hard. Dustin, can we use a simple password like I like, or do we got to do one of your silly, like Dustin likes to make up, use, you know, when you sign up for an account and you go <laughs> on to there, uh, you probably use the same password you use for the other 15 accounts like I do, because it's simple. Or maybe you add an extra asterisk or an extra add about symbol in there, an extra capitalization. <laughs> Dustin typically takes like the recommended key, which is like 75 characters long with every consonant, every vowel, every <laughs> number. And it's like, yeah, that'll work. It's impossible to remember. You have to be the copy and paster. But I guess it makes it also very difficult uh, to hack yeah the truth is is the best regards in terms of security would be four to five words which you can remember that are semi-random and not consecutive and that is actually stronger than the 70 character randomized thing um and part of it is this idea that you should be able to remember your password. If you have to write your password down somewhere in some capacity, you're inherently risking something. You're giving up some sense of security for some other sense of security. So it's just, it's one of those things. But yeah, I don't know. It's, it's funny. I am one of the random fucking, part of it is that, I don't know. You ever get like when you sign up for something with Apple, they're like suggested password and they pre-give you the, 19 character random shit yes yeah what am i gonna do backtrack that and say no 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 i'm gonna type in dustin exclamation <laughs> which everything has an exclamation at the end it's like you know I there is always an exclamation all right we're almost there we're almost to the hard part i almost got the password set up let me do this verification email real quick and then we'll bring it up um i gotta write down this password because i'm never gonna remember <laughs> Enter it to the air table, Dustin says. I'm never going to remember this mess. Uh, I almost said it out loud. I was like, what am I doing? I'm literally on the, uh, on the podcast right now. People are already tuned off, but if you're not tuned off, the payoff's coming, everyone. All right, so here we go. Got my OTP code. So what they do is they send you the thing. All right, this is not hard. They send us a standard. Send me a code. When did that become popular, by the way? Every single time I do something now, I got to get a code sent to my email. Not even if I have two-factor on or off. Like I still have to get these codes uh, sent to me. Okay. <laughs> um, all right. We are in the account. Here we go, people. Let's see how this works. I don't know where to go or what to do. So you're going to have to help walk me through some of this. All right. So right now, it's wanting me to buy some earbuds and some K-Cups. Can you uh, take that tab and get it out of the StreamYard thing? Get it in its own Chrome window first. Like just drag the tab off the top. And then resize it because you can make the screen taller so that we have a larger screen there. That I do not makes... know what you mean by that. Okay, you know how you have multiple tabs at the top of your, your browser? Yeah, close them yeah. all out. No, 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 no. You're just drag the one of Amazon into its own thing. You're just pulling it out of the. Oh, I get row. you. I get what you're trying to do. And then when you can resize it width and height wise, you can actually fill out the whole screen of the video box here. I get you now. All right, everyone. Here we go. Okay. Rock okay. and roll. All right. So we're signing. This is how it's difficult. All right. So let's go this. Let's get set up. Let's bring our Amazon here. Signing up for our affiliate uh, program. Is this what you want? 
Yeah, and now make the window not as wide because it'll make it taller for you. So like actually like grab, there you go. You see what I'm, you're doing there now, right? So you can yeah. actually like play with that a little bit, make it a little, you know. There you go. Right, we'll do that. Now right. we're talking. Okay, affiliate links. Now Where's I'm, that at? Oh man, this is the second. Okay, I don't know. I guess. <laughs> So if we were to do that, I would, I think it's a fuck affiliate program. Amazon. I think you got to go to a whole different website. All your right. Private chat. Okay. So starting at affiliate dash program dot Amazon dot com. All right. This is what I'm talking about. Everyone you're sitting out there, you want to do it. So right now, hopefully if you're watching right now, if you have a podcast, if you have something you're doing, if you have guests on your show, you should uh, join uh, this program here. All right, here we go. Okay. Um, uh, uh, hold on. I got to do this whole password thing. Mm. I don't know. All right. So here we go. All right. Oh, there's a lot here, Dustin. I did not feel like this is the best use of our time right now on here. Mm. I don't know. I think that guy's wrong. I don't think this is this hard. But there's a lot of information to sign up for here, like the payee. I got a lot of things I got to read and set up and profile. So <laughs> I don't think we're doing this right now. All right. Well, you we were watching it. You were doing it, but now you get the now you get the bus. That's all right. Uh, so it's those type of things, right? We're trying to figure out how to get better at that. So we'll set up our affiliate program. So when you buy something through us, eventually uh, we'll get it set up through there. Uh, we got some other things coming up, Dustin. Don't laugh at me. I don't know. We're trying, man. We're trying here. Sometimes you got no guests. Sometimes you got to fire up a show. Like this is what trying to get ahead is. It's trying to figure all this out and be like, is this a good idea? Sometimes it's not. Some, nothing. Everything's a great idea. My favorite thing in life is that every time I thought it was going to take so many steps, it tends to take a few more. And, you know, it's just one of those things. I, I, I think it that this is just the way life works every time. And I, I think if it went smoothly, I'd not feel as confident about it. <laughs> uh, me as well. Me as well. Uh, you know what? Speaking of going smoothly, we have some live events coming up, Dustin, that we should probably talk about. And uh, how you're feeling about doing these uh, live events. Uh, we got one coming up this weekend. You're not part of this one, but I'll be there this weekend at the Cleveland School of Cannabis. Um, that is Saturday, July 22nd. Uh, you can go to uh, cseducation.com and events and buy tickets. We have a comedy show. It can't it can a comedy show. Uh, you can check it out at cseducation.com slash events. Um, tickets are only five bucks. I'll be hosting the show, doing an MC, doing a little stand up bit to start the show. We got a couple of great comedians at the school. It's only 50 people. Max seating is going to sell out may already be, but check out, uh, there. So we have that coming up. I'm looking forward to that. I got to tell you though, hmm, I'm working on my bit. I'm not going to get a chance to practice it in front of a, a live crowd. I did not get a chance to work the open mic. So now it's just me. 10 minutes of what if, can they laugh or not? It's like doing this. It's like turning it on, seeing what happens, except here's the difference. I try to be funny. I try to be silly. We try to have a good time. I don't know who's listening, not listening. I really don't think or worry about it. It's clearly evident from that last 15 minute Amazon thing, which was a total bust. So I, what are you going to do? Right? So I'm out there. We're trying to do it. We're creating new content every week, but this is different. Oh yeah. My Instant crowd feedback. Work, yeah, instant feedback. It's not only instant feedback. I teach a lot. I do a lot of public speaking. And just when you're educating people or informing people, <laughs> you can tell them a ton of information. And if you drop in a funny line, if you make a little joke, if you get a little silly and they laugh, it's good. But if they don't laugh during your information or educational session, it's OK. Right. It's just a thing. You tried a little joke. Ah, it didn't work. If they do laugh, you're like, hey, yeah, yeah, I'm feeling good. The <laughs> difference is the difference with Canna Comedy coming up this weekend, Saturday, July 22nd, 6 or 7 p.m., something like that, the Cleveland School of Cannabis uh, in Independence, Ohio, is you have 50 people who are sitting there and they want to laugh. They paid <laughs> money with the expectation of laughing, right? It's a weird thing when you do comedy. You give money. Like when you listen to a podcast, like you may laugh with the host at guest or host funnier than us, or maybe you laugh with us. You may laugh 
with them, but it's not like a, even a comedy podcast. There's no like exchange and no bartering of, well, I'm going to listen to this and you better fucking make me laugh kind of thing. But when you pay money, I mean, if it's five bucks, do you pay for the literal expectation of make me laugh? <laughs> and they're sitting there and they're ready for it. And when you don't and you can't, <sighs> the, 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 I don't even know what to say. When you can't and you don't, that feeling is, it's demoralizing, <laughs> but it also is like anything creative or anything like this that we do. And you put out content every week. You try to make an entertaining show. They're not all winners. We have some amazing shows. We've had some that aren't. There's sports teams where they win and they're amazing in teams when they just shit the field and nothing is good. It is part of putting yourself out there for both creativity or competition and then having the public consume it. They're not all winners, but being in the front of a crowd who expects to laugh and bombing is miserable. <laughs> it's a terrible feeling. Yeah, that does. I, I don't envy you this weekend. Uh, however, that's just this weekend. August 19th. August 19th at Riddall Green Partnership, Riddall Urban Farms in Euclid, oh, yeah. Ohio. We, and this is where I'm making Dustin come out. We are going to be <laughs> emceeing and hosting Midwest Canafest 3. Midwest Canafest 3 at Riddall Farms, uh, Riddall Urban Partnership out in Euclid, Ohio. A wonderful organization. Check out SoilBros.com. SoilBros.com is a documentary about the folks that run Riddall, uh, what they've done there. Uh, make sure, fact check me, Dustin. Make sure I got that documentary title right. Something like that. Uh, we'll put the link in the description below. But they did a documentary on these gentlemen who've created an urban garden. In it's the city Soil of Cleveland. Soilbrothersfilm.com. 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 Great film. Check it out. It really tells the story. Dustin and I will be there with Allie Reeves uh, with Midwest Can of Women. It's her birthday and a celebration she puts on. This year's event is free. And this year's event is uh, ironically kind of focused on the big players, right? It's not as much of a smaller show with some of the companies. Uh, this is a focus and a celebration of some of the people who have made a difference and impact in cannabis, both in Ohio and nationally. There'll be a ton of companies represented there. Um, I don't know if we'll have a lot of products, but a ton of companies represented. Uh, we're going to have uh, some presentations. Dustin and I are going to interview. I don't know if you know this all. Interview each of these companies kind of live in front of everyone on stage, uh, kind of talking with them uh, and do a fun uh, few things there. So Dustin and I will be there. It's all day. Well, not all day, like 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. We'll put a link down uh, below. Midwest Canifest 3. Um, none like the last thing I made you do, Dustin, where we did with Medicaid OH, Gabriel Dion. We love her as well. I tend to say, hey, Dustin, we're going to do this live thing. And I make the assumption. I, apparently, I have learned in the last <laughs> year that I am incorrect in this assumption. I make this assumption. You can do this. You can sit here with me and talk to your little camera and talk to your microphone, and we can have silly conversations. We can bring in strangers. And I know you've had some that you've liked better than much, but we can have a third or fourth person, and you carry yourself fine. But for some reason... I get you in front of the crowds and then you get mad at me. Like, you know, you play mad, like not mad, mad. He does it. Dustin, you really don't like the live shows though, do you? Oh no, oh, it's you. not that. I think it's the, I am total fucking um, a rack right before the camera opens. And then when the camera opens, I feel a lot more comfortable, but there are a lot of weeks leading up to that camera or, or curtain you know, opening up. And so I just shit the bed for those couple weeks, man. I do not do well. And you know what? You have a habit of downplaying the scenario in order to get me <laughs> to say yes. So it's like, uh, yeah, yeah, there's going to be like eight people there. And next thing you know, there's 180, you know, or you're like, yeah, yeah, we were just going to do uh, a little like booth and talk a little bit. And then it's like, we're hosting the entire show. The whole convention is on our shoulders, you know? And then it's just like, it's a totally different thing. And I, I have learned to ask the details with you in order to best gauge because there are some yeah, but I, now you know okay. why my wife checks on me when I say I'll be home in five minutes, and she's like, "You're still in Canton. You can't be home in five minutes." I'm like, "I'm, I'm, I'm on my way." She's like, "You're done." So, I have an underplay bet. Part of it is I don't want you to say no, uh, and I know that you'll say yes when you get there, which sounds like I'm grooming you to get into as my co-host. Uh, but the other part is I don't always. I'm not good at that part. I don't ask a lot of details. So like, you want to be on stage and host? I'm like, sure. And then. <laughs> 
And you know this very well, Dustin. Then you say, yeah, sure, I'll help you out. And then the work just kind of layers on and the, the responsibilities pile on. And next thing you know, you're like, shit, I'm hosting the whole show. Dustin's going to hate this. But we're, <laughs> we've already committed. Let's do it. So, yeah. And I'm excited about this one. I think that there are some really cool things that we don't get to do with the video here that we get to do live. And I think that sometimes, especially in that environment, all the guests are building off of stuff that was said prior. And by the end of the thing, you're getting some really, really deep conversations and, and really well thought out points between anybody. So I just think the panels are cool. The individual interviews are cool. It's a, it's a really neat, almost speed dating of heady questions that we get to do and it's kind of a fun they're fun they're awesome it is fun so make sure you check that out that is august 19th at riddle um you can check sawyerbrothersfilm.com to learn more about riddle urban partnership um it's too many ums Midwest Cannon Fest 3 dustin and i will be there we're going to be mc in the event it's 11 a.m till 4 p.m it's Ali Reeves, friend of the show she'll actually be on the show right before that week i think she's gonna whatever that wednesday is prior to Midwest Canifest, so the 16th or 17th, Allery's going to be recording with us a couple days beforehand. So we're going to have her on the show right before Midwest Canifest to talk about what she's done. She has been an OG in Ohio cannabis, really helping promote it. She works with Nicole Ross at Nora Labs as well. Uh, really huge push because her being in, you know, a African-American and a lesbian proud woman, like she's got a lot of representation in the industry. And so it's really exciting uh, for what she's doing out there. So we're excited to have her on the show and help our friend Ali promote that. Um, Dustin and I are going to take some new photos, look all pretty out there and everything. So those couple <laughs> events are coming up. Of course, we got OCHBS coming up in October. Uh, there's a lot of great, if you're in Northeast Ohio, there's a ton of great meetups, even in all of Ohio and maybe in your area, wherever you're listening locally, I think that's something that I have learned and we'll kind of wrap up the show and finish on this for the last few minutes. Dustin is I have never been someone to get actively involved in a community. In fact, I roll my eyes at community and I talked about being on Reddit <laughs> earlier and then all of a sudden I feel weird and old and I'm like doing that even in the disc golf world, which I love. I still feel like an outsider. Sometimes I'm not always a fan of community. And I know that sounds weird, but everyone's like, if you're going to be involved in cannabis, you got to be in the community and you have to come to all these events. I don't know how I feel about all of it sometimes. I don't know how I feel about all the huggy duggy stuff. It's just not who I am on a personal level. We've talked about this. Like I'm a little dig you. I see being more community. You, know, you, you got the hair and the beard for it. I don't, right? I'm just not there. But we have been attending. I've been attending more of these things like these marijuana meetups that are happening. And you probably have these in your area. And it's a good mixture of people walking both sides of cannabis. It's a good mixture sometimes when you find yourself in the cannabis world, like so deep as we talked about at the beginning of the show to realize it is normal people as well. You know, there's the cannabis doesn't. And that's something that we talk a lot about in, you know, when we teach the class at the Cleveland school of cannabis, cannabis isn't the defining factor of you. And I think that's an exciting part. We have this show because cannabis here, we talk it every week, Dustin. But when I think about you, and we talk about cannabis a lot with you, but I don't even think about, that's not the first like five things that comes up anymore. Like Dustin's a weed smoker. I don't even think about it, right? That's just a thing, right? It's, uh, I don't think it's something that should define you. So I don't think about that anymore. It's weird though. How do you feel about the community of cannabis? Uh, I mean, we talked about it with Danielle. It's a bunch of fucking people wearing their Zoloft on their shoulders. You know, it is the weird, it is totally just super weird i i don't know man i bet it's been this is my fucking oh god uh 12th 15th year in cannabis think about that like uh, it's a long it's a long fucking time to be like this is the greatest shit in the world I'm gonna, and i still talk about it every day and so every day I, I, I don't I don't necessarily know. I think that there is a massive bubble with this community bullshit, especially because I think these community, I think that these larger corporations that try to take part in community things, I don't know. I just don't feel like, it just doesn't feel, there's certain things that just don't feel right. I just, I feel like it's just, uh, it's worth the 
$600 that they're going to donate for the thing just to get their name on it. And it's just this, like, I don't know, man. It's kind of like people fucking jerking each other off on LinkedIn. It's that same dirty feeling about, you know, propping everybody up at all times and everybody putting all their shit out there to be propped up. I think that's part of it. There is, I mean, there's plenty of, plenty of backstabbing, plenty of gossip in there. Uh, but it is a lot of that, right? Everyone trying to promote. But I find as a whole, you run into, you know, part of getting yourself out there and putting out, which is why I think some of these events are wonderful. Do you run into kindred spirits, right? You run into people who you really connect with. And it does help normalize the place. When you rent out a facility, for example, when you rent out a facility and then you put on it cannabis, like the the whatever you're doing, the event has cannabis in the title, it's in there. It automatically changes the venue director's mindset of what's happening. These are people who will do weddings every single weekend and dudes yeah. are getting slaughtered with keg stands <laughs> and doing crazy things. And they know that I've wedding DJed over a hundred weddings. I've seen some things, but when you put the word cannabis on there is one of our friends of the show found out they tried to rent a facility and they were going to do inside and outside at this facility. And they're like, you can have the inside, but we don't want you outside. We don't want people to like see the signs in the community. Think about the children. Like oh, they're going to see the word cannabis. <laughs> Meanwhile, there's a bar, a brewery. There's a fucking bar, right? Yeah. There's a brewery <laughs> up the street and there's a bar right there. There's actually a head shop down the road, but there's a bar right in this section that, that we're talking about. It. And they're like, yeah, you can't be outside. We'll put you in. <laughs> I love it. Yours. It's that. So you, it's the ballpark, mom. White. It's this. It's all of it. Yes. It just falls full circle back into what we were talking about earlier in the episode. Just in a different place, in a different environment. It's all the same. It's the same. But I also feel like we overdo it because of that. Because you're always has that extra little shit. It's like we go above and beyond to be like. Well, I smoke weed and look at how normal I am. You know, like I just smoked a fatty and now I'm reading a book to my children. I'm fucking awesome. <laughs> you know, like it's, it's, it's this real, I don't know, man. I, I love the industry. I truly do. And I love the people within it, which is why I've been willing to build and spend so much of my adult life pursuing a career within it. But I do think that sometimes we need to like, you know, take a step back and laugh at ourselves because we are silly sometimes. We are silly sometimes, Dustin Kava. That's what this whole show is about. It's it's uh, lowbrow, highbrow, highbrow conversations about lowbrow topics. High whatever brow, our tag low beard conversations. Love it. Uh, I like being silly with you every single week, Dustin. Uh, it's fun, right? We talked about, we got some great shows. There's a lot of tremendous cannabis podcasts out there. If you host a cannabis podcast and want to do a guest swap, let us know. We'll have you on. We'd love to be on your show as well. We're trying to connect within the cannabis community uh, virtually as well. So hit us up, uh, reach out to us. Hello at wayward.media. If you'd like to be on the show or have some sponsorships, maybe start an affiliate program with us. We'd appreciate that. I love being kind of silly. With you every week, Dustin. Uh, coming up soon, though, the next few shows aren't as fun. Fun shows, but not as silly uh, as when Dustin and I can get together and talk about whatever, try to sign up for an account and sign up absolutely normally uh, <laughs> and go through that whole process. But we got some great interviews. We've already recorded some, some coming up with some really wonderful folks. So please sub give us a subscription. Give us a, uh, a follow uh, so you can find some of those guests there. Check us out every single Wednesday, 4.20 p.m., brand new shows on YouTube Thursdays, video podcast on Spotify. Please give us a follow on there or anywhere that you listen to audio podcasts at me, WM Socially. Uh, tons of links in the comments today. Places like budlove.com, the Plant Save My Life podcast, couragingcannabis.com. Uh, check that one out. We'll put Midwest Cannafest into there. Uh, put a link for the comedy show that's coming up this Saturday. Um, lots of great things coming up. Dustin and I will be out and about. Hopefully get to see you guys soon. Dustin? As always, thank you for joining me, man. We'll see you next week. Yeah, heck yeah. Later, brother. Please subscribe. I can't believe that Amazon thing didn't work.